OK, so question two was a little more unusual to what you've dealt with, although it was still a backwards uh, and inverting normal distribution problem as we looked at last time. This time you didn't know the mean. OK, that was, that was unusual. OK, uh, we hadn't seen one necessarily like that before. <laughs> but that's a possible thing. So you can kind of imagine that actually um, you could have a problem, uh, quite similar problem, where you don't know the standard deviation. OK, it's just a, a, a straightforward a, equation to use. If you've got all the other bits of information, then you could work out the standard deviation. OK. We could have a problem, as we're going to look at now, where actually we don't know perhaps the mean or the standard deviation. OK. So we're going to look at this example. And you've got a copy of the example on your sheet. A salmon farm has a large population of fish whose weights are known to be normally distributed. However, the mean and standard deviation of the weights are not known. A large number of fish were netted, and it was found that 4% of these weighed less than 3 kilos, and 2.3% weighed more than 6 kilos. Use this information to estimate the mean and standard deviation of the salmon. OK. So we've now got two bits of information. And what we probably want to do is to draw a diagram of what's going on. OK. So if I first of all write down that x is normally distributed, but we don't know the mean and we don't know the standard deviation, the normal distribution bell curve that we could draw, there's the mean. We know that 4% weighed less than 3 kilos. So 3 kilos has got to be down here in order for that to be 4%. So I'll write it as 0 0.04. <coughs> and I also know that 2.3% weighed more than 6 kilos. So 6 kilos is going to be up here somewhere in order for that to be 2.3%. So what I need to do is I need to look at both of those cases uh, individually first, and then we're going to bring them together. So if I look at this bit first, I can find the inverse norm of 0 0.04. Now, if you're using the tables, remember, OK, if you're using the tables, then you've got to look up 0 0.96 and use the negative of that result, because it's to the left-hand side. If you've got the class whiz, you can just type that in directly and not have to worry about it. So 0 0.96 for using the tables. And we should be looking at minus 1.75068. So um, how far does it go in the tables? Does it go to? 1.75? 1. 1? Yeah. OK, we'll go to there then. OK? So we'll, we'll maintain with the tables. We'll go to the uh, three decimal places. And so from that, you can then say, well, that minus 1.751 is the z value. I know the x value is 3, but I don't know the mean and I don't know the standard deviation. So what I can do is I can reorganize this so that if I multiply both sides by the sigma and add the mu to both sides, I'm going to get mu take 1.751 sigma is equal to 3. That is equation number 1. And then you can kind of see where this is going to be going, right? So that's the multiplying sigma, both sides, adding the mu. So then I can look at the second bit of information. Now, inverse norm, this time, will be of 0 0.977. Because you're looking to the left-hand side. Even with the uh, calculator, with the Casio class whiz, you've still got to use 0 0.977. So 
So does the uh, formula booklet give that as 1.995? Yeah. yeah. OK, so let's keep with that then. So that means that 1.995 is the z value. I know the x value is 6. I don't know the mean and I don't know the standard deviation. So multiplying both sides by the sigma and adding mu to both sides, mu plus 1.995 sigma is equal to 6. And there's equation number 2. So now it's reduced it to just a basic simultaneous equations problem. So if I do equation number 2, take away equation number 1, this will knock out the mu's. I'll have this 1.995. Uh, take away minus 1.751. So that's 3.746 sigma is going to be 6 take away 3. So divide the 3 by 3.746. And so sigma will be 0 0.801 to 3 sig fig. So that's kilos going into the units. And then you could substitute that back into one of the two original equations. Um, so if I do times that by 1.995 and then take it away from 6, we'll get mu as 4.40 kilos to 3 sig fig. Also make sure that the answers that you get seem reasonable. So 4.40 between 3 and 6, uh, standard deviation of 0.8, so the majority of data Three standard deviations either side, so 0.8, 1.6, 2.4 would bring us up to 6.8-ish uh, on that side, so that seems reasonable. And then taking 2.4 would get us down to 2 on the left-hand side, so that seems reasonable also. Okay, so that's how we can build up this problem. And as I showed you, um, as I showed you last time, there was, I think I showed you last time, there was that exam question that was similar to that. Okay. So, draw the diagram, build up the two simultaneous equations, and then solve. Okay. Right, so what we want to do today is to really bring um, our skills together for normal distribution and make sure that we're able to deal with these types of problems. So what we've got here is kind of like a, a board showing everything so far, really. We've got uh, the bog standard uh, normal distribution find a probability question. We've got the uh, slightly more complicated inverting the situation to find unknowns. Uh, given the probabilities, and now we've got potential simultaneous equation problems. So, um, the MEI textbook is good for this uh, with question 7 and question 14 on page 46, but you've also got in your pack a set of exam questions, which I want to make sure that we are happy with. The solutions are also <coughs> given to you. Okay? So I want you to take the opportunity to make sure you're asking me for any help that you need and getting as much practice with normal distribution as you can so that we can move on next time. <laughs>